everyone and welcome back I have got five items in four bags so it's another mail bag first one up is this one here ordered May 18th arrived June 9th 12 or eighteen dollars and twenty seven cents and three dollars and six cents and this comes from that uh, reshipping warehouse in Tirana or Mississauga I mean close enough I think it's in the GTA uh, so we don't know what it is, but we're soon going to find out. Oh boy. There are labels on these. Gonna have to um, blur them out. Alright, let's try this again. So here's one of the packages. Gonna gently... Oh man, another label. Hold on a sec. Okay. Okay. This label is fine. There we go. So we've got uh, bags here, and this one I think I shouldn't be able to flip over. There we go. Okay. So I think we're good now. Um, let's zoom in a little bit because both these things are kind of small. So first is this pile of 10 devices. We'll open one because they're all the same. These are PIR or passive infrared sensors. So I've been working with some PIR sensors recently for a project. And the big thing was I didn't have a bunch that were the same. Um, these here are all the same. I've got 10 of them now. They're fairly inexpensive and I have not seen them on YouTube before. So my plan is to do a separate video on using these things so you guys can figure out how and um, I will put them into my new project and so um, it'll all have a constant form factor. So that's pretty neat. This is just a little sort of like a plastic globe and usually that is just stuck on top of the PIR, but usually you can just take it right off. This one seems pretty tight in there. That's interesting. All the circuitry is already on the back, and I can see the out is here. And you see the S plus and S minus. So I'm going to be really curious to have a go at these things. And um, yeah, see if I can make them work in my projects and help you guys make them work in yours. So that's pretty neat. Next item up is this one here, and this I probably have to break out the macro lens for, but uh, this is another component for my stock of surface mount devices. These are, I might have to go look at the, at the listing actually, but I believe they are um, either a PNP, MOS, a PNP transistor or a P-channel MOSFET. Let me go get the specifics. Just smoking them because I got them. Here is the transistors in question. MOSFETs in this case. This is the AO3401. This is a P-channel MOSFET. And I bought these because I have the AO3400s, which is the equivalent N-channel MOSFET. Let me peel one out of the uh, reel here doesn't really matter if I peel one out because um, these are not going to stay in the reel. I have uh, surface mount uh, storage solutions. There we go. So there's the little guy there. Uh, this little thing, and it is tiny, that's the end of the exacto there. Um, this little thing is capable of roughly 3.2 amps. So that's why I got them, because they're tiny. This was three bucks for a hundred of them. And um, I am building a set of, you know, jelly bean parts. This one is part of that. And um, basically, eventually, when I gather up all the data of the jelly bean parts I need, or, you know, I should have, I'm going to actually publish a list for all newcomers to choose from. So just standard parts to have around. Um, three cents a pop is pretty cheap pretty good for prototyping and so if you don't have any check the link in the description to get yourself some 
And while we're all dressed up with nowhere to go, I might as well show you the backside of these PIR sensors. I think that looks like a 3.3 volt regulator right there. Can't be sure. Uh, the rest are all passives. Got a couple caps, got a couple of resistors. And maybe we can take a look at the front side. Signal plus, signal minus, or supply plus, supply minus, I'm not sure. And out, oh look, it's marked. Positive in the middle, negative on the right side there, and out on the left side. And this is the little cap that I was trying to remove earlier. I don't know if it'll come off. Oh, it seems to be sliding. There we go. And that's what the PIR looks like. Well, this one is absolutely filthy. So it might be a good idea to pull off the caps and clean them off. And in case you were wondering, there it goes inside my storage device with the rest of my SOT23 devices. Next one up is this one here. It's an XT60 connectors, so I guess there's not really much mystery of what's in there. Uh, $7.91, uh, May 10th to June 3rd. And of course, all these prices might seem a little bit higher than what you can get on AliExpress, but that includes shipping. So here we go. Um, if you don't know anything about the remote control car hobby, then you probably don't know what these connectors are. Uh, what they are is they are a fantastic way to move a lot of current on a polarized plug. So you've got uh, this section here with some recessed... You know what? Let me zoom you in. Just yell at your screen when I'm going on and on and you can't see. All right. So uh, what these are, they are a polarized plug, so they only plug in one way. And basically what they are is um, about a four or so millimeter banana plug, really. That's what they are in essence. Uh, this one here goes on the battery side typically. So you'll have something like a lithium polymer battery at the other end of this, capable of delivering a lot of current. And you've got here these sort of like the female ends, and on this side would be your device side, this would be the male ends, and they go together quite well. Um, they, you know, they, they arc internally sometimes, but they're quite well protected. Um, they go together fairly well. They're easy to solder. You solder your wires onto these, um, these little buckets here, and then you use heat shrink uh, that'll shrink hard enough to go into these uh, little holes. This is partially what I ordered the heat shrink, my um, three to one heat shrink with glue for. This is a little bit of a casting imperfection. Look at that, that's all, that's plastic. Yeah, well anyways, these are not genuine XT60, they're XT60 style connectors, so I don't expect them to, to get the full current draw of an XT60, but um, I've got 20 pairs here, I believe. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Yeah, I've got uh, ten pairs, so twenty connectors, uh, for fairly low price, eight dollars. I mean, pre-pandemic it would have been cheaper, but um, you know, it just is what it is, and I can trim off the little excess stuff. Not that big of a deal. If you guys want a little tutorial on how to solder these together. Let me know in the comments below, but other than that, it is pretty straightforward. I use these pretty much anywhere where I need a reliable connection uh, capable of moving a lot of current and, um, yeah, with two conductors. So that's kind of that. I need to restock because I was running quite low, only... Um, three of the sort of battery ends and one of the device ends. So yeah, it was time to restock and now I've got some. Next one up, I found this one interesting. Uh, I found a listing for insurance on AliExpress. So I'm not sure if it's uh, medical or life insurance just yet, but yeah, two quantity insurance. And insurance from China is extremely cheap. $11.44 ordered on May 10th, come, came on June 2nd. 
So if you're in a rush for a medical procedure, probably not a good idea to um, order this from China. But uh, I mean, if uh, if you're not in a hurry, like if you're a healthy person just waiting for your insurance to kick in, not a bad idea. Okay, quite interesting. Does anybody know what these things are? Give up yet? Well, certainly you have heard of these things. These are automotive fuses. These specifically are the mini form factor. And what these guys are is these are a PCB mount or through hole mount for a PCB. Um, fuse holder so you're supposed to take this and slide it into here and then you have fuses that are fairly cheap because automotive fuses you can get at the freaking dollar store these days um, fa fairly cheap way to protect your circuits however um, trying this off camera oh they're extremely stiff I mean it's probably better once it's soldered onto a board but like these these connectors are way, they're crimped way too tightly. So I think a little bit of modification is probably required. Probably just run a flathead screwdriver, a thin one through there. Um, or just enjoy the fact that you probably won't have any voltage drop because of how freaking tight they fit. Oh my, they're like, they're extremely tight. They do fit in there. I did get one in, but then when you pull it out, the plastic piece comes off. So I'll have to make a couple of test boards uh, to see if these are any good at all. Um, but I mean, one way or another, uh, they do fit these fuses. They're the right spacing and um, they will work. So I probably will use these in future designs. But yeah, this is should th this should be an easy way to integrate a fuse that is easy to, to test and easy to visually see if it's ruptured or not. There's the fusible link in the middle. And so these things are fairly cheap and I will be going with them. So look forward to these in future PCB projects. Last but not least, there's an Amazon one uh, ordered from Amazon for two reasons. One, the price was $9.57, which was within 2 or $3 from getting it from AliExpress, but it was available with Prime shipping, June 8th to June 12th. Um, and second of all is because this has to do with my live streams. So make sure you uh, hit that little, I guess, little cowbell or whatever that's down there in order to be uh, told when I go live because... Yeah, the uh, live stream recently has been quite a doozy and I want to do more of them. So if you want to watch me solder extremely tiny LEDs and a ton of them, make sure you're subscribed. And this has to do with that. So whoever of you saw that live stream knew that I was struggling with the fact that my, um, my LEDs were being picked up by the magnetism in my tweezers. And so I finally, I went out and I got ceramic tweezers. So this should not be a problem anymore. Um, some people in the chat were saying that the, um, the, the tweezers, the ceramic tweezers would get filled up with flux and stick anyways. But I mean, I have alcohol, um, and, and I, I mean, rubbing alcohol, not alcohol, alcohol. Okay, YouTube um, um, monetization police. But um, yeah, I have rubbing alcohol to deal with that, so I'm not too worried. And they, these actually, they feel really nice. And I can see that the tips close a little bit crooked. You see, they close a little bit crooked. But I might be able to sort of bend the stainless part of these in order to fix that. Not tea bag. And last one here, the curved ones. And there we go. They feel like nice and heavy. Um, let's just make sure they're non-magnetic. I got my nice uh, visual aid here. 
So this is supposed to be stainless steel. That is probably not a high grade or not at all. But the important part, yeah, this is not metal or anything. These are supposed to be ceramic. So it should be able to heat them up with the soldering iron. It won't be a problem. But yeah, I'm, uh, I'm really excited to uh, continue the live streams. So I hope you guys will join me in those. And these five items make up today's mailbag. I want to thank my Patreon supporters in, for enabling me to order stuff like this. Even though sometimes it's been coming in slowly, uh, I still do get to order stuff because of their support. If you want to support the channel, however, and you don't want to spend money, there are, or don't want to directly give me money, there are two ways to do it. One is to use my affiliate links in the descriptions of all the videos. And two is to watch, share, subscribe, and especially the share part. If you know someone that's into these kinds of videos, let them know about it. Growing the channel is super important, uh, especially in YouTube's eyes. So, yeah. If you're here and you're watching, I appreciate you. Thanks for watching.